In case you missed their update video, Aptera is making some pretty interesting moves lately. Not only has their most recent crowdfunding round been going really, really well for them, but also they've started recognizing their first official revenue through the Aptera solar business. They didn't say officially who the customer was yet, but according to Steve from Aptera Owners Club, we're pretty sure it's Polydrops because they're making trailers and starting to deliver them to customers. So it was really exciting to me to think that there's actually going to be Polydrop owners out there with Aptera branded solar on them charging up their trailers allowing them to run the hvac charge their phones or power any interior appliances and that kind of thing so that's a big moment for any startup company where they finally start recognizing revenue so congrats to aptera for actually delivering some solar to your first customers that's great it's probably not going to be a ton of revenue to like pay for their path to production but it is a good start because it allows them to start ordering more solar materials in bulk from their suppliers which of course helps them achieve lower pricing once their vehicle goes into production also can help other potential customers out there realize that they're a legit operation and yes they've delivered solar panels in the past but also directly after their april update video they surprisingly announced this partnership with inmotive and i'll admit when i first saw this announcement i was a little bit skeptical i was a little bit concerned i was like wait a second i thought the vitesco emr3 motor was basically just like done and locked in and i didn't think think Aptera was still exploring different powertrain options, but hear me out for a minute because the more I read, the more sense it made, and actually after researching it, you know, I'm not making this video five minutes after the announcement was made. I did a bit more research before actually hitting the record button, and the more I'm looking into it, the more I'm like, you know what? This actually is a pretty good idea, and I'm glad they're doing it. So first off, the InMotive collaboration is not replacing the Vitesco EMR3. This is a two-speed transmission that works in conjunction with the EMR3 drivetrain, and it's not a very large component, and like all of Aptera's partnership announcements, as I've said before, these things are usually talked about months and months and months in advance. This is not the kind of thing they found out about last week and went, oh, you know what? Let's actually throw that in there and see what happens. I'm sure there were talks going on for months, potentially over a year, with InMotive, because they've been around for a while. They signed a joint agreement with Suzuki, so it's not just startups working with startups to be clear, but Suzuki is interested in this two-speed transmission specifically designed for electric vehicles, so that's where my initial skepticism came from, because I'm a big hater of combustion engines, and as soon as I hear transmission, I'm like, oh god, please don't bring anything over from the combustion engine era, but the more I've looked into this, the more I've realized this is not really the same kind of transmissions we have in gas vehicles. This one is built from the ground up for EVs, there's only two speeds, whereas combustion engines tend to usually have a bit more than that, and there's a lot more complexity complexity with getting the engine to go backwards and there's still a lot of electrical simplicity that comes from an EV motor just being able to spin forwards or backwards and InMotive has actually specialized this two-speed transmission to be relatively affordable like 150 bucks is what they're talking about to throw this thing in an Aptera so it's still a added part it is still some added complexity but my next question was like okay is this trade-off really going to be worth it adding maybe a $150 component with the goal of increasing efficiency, which is important for Aptera, but is this trade-off going to be worth it? So I looked into it. Are other EVs using two-speed transmissions? And while certainly most EVs don't, there's actually a growing number that are. And one of the first major OEMs to incorporate a two-speed transmission was Porsche with the Taycan. I actually remember talking about this a long time ago, and I questioned, you know, does this really help boost range that much? But to Porsche's credit, I looked into this, and they have been known for vastly exceeding their EPA rated range, especially on the highway. Out of Spec has done, you know, cannonball records with the Porsche Taycan and quickly realized like, wow, okay, that two-speed transmission, while it is odd and you don't see it on Teslas or even Lucids, which is interesting, you think Lucid would be willing to pay for that added expense, but Porsche was able to achieve well over 60, 70 miles past their EPA rated range simply thanks to that two-speed transmission. It means that when you're traveling at higher speeds, you can switch to to a lower gear so that the RPMs of the electric motor don't have to spin as crazy fast, doesn't have to use as much energy, but it can still maintain a really high speed. And this was years ago, by the way. The Taycan came out like five years ago now, or maybe a little more, but it's not just Porsche. Now there's actually been confirmation that Mercedes is working on, you know, a cheaper electric option, cheaper than the EQS or EQE, and this all-electric CLA variant is also going to be accommodating for a two-speed transmission, again, 
again for the goal of boosting range and efficiency. So that's, I guess, at first glance why I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, this seems like an efficiency booster that only the big guys are willing to accommodate, like Porsche and Mercedes. These are kind of luxurious brands, right? But in Motive's talking about offering similar functionality and boosting EV range with something that would really only cost Aptera around 150 bucks to accommodate. So I, like many of you, had immediate questions on, wait a second, is this planning on going to production? And the verbiage doesn't make that abundantly clear, but they do say that the Inmotive two-speed transmission is planned for adoption within the PI3 vehicle. So this is not a theoretical component. This is not something just built in software. This is a real device. This is a real vehicle component that they are incorporating into PI3 now, which is supposed to be roadworthy within the next couple of weeks. And I guess Aptera plans on actually road testing it and seeing how great the efficiency really can be. So Aptera hasn't announced exactly like if they plan on going to production with this component, I'm sure they could probably leave it out if need be. But my guess, if I were to speculate on what they've announced, is that they're going to put this two-speed transmission into PI3 and see how much of a difference it actually makes on efficiency. Because I'm sure via software, they could probably just not activate it. And of course, they've got other PI vehicles in the works for their upcoming road trip this summer. So they could probably efficiency test them side by side and figure out, okay, how much range do we actually get out of this two-speed transmission? And if it's a marginal amount, if it really only boosts range by one or two percent, maybe they'll just not go to production with it and say, yeah, you know what, we'll keep it as an option maybe down the road, but for now we don't really need it. But if they do a side-by-side -side range test and find out that this two-speed transmission boosts efficiency by what Inmotive is claiming, somewhere between 10 or maybe 15 percent better, that's actually pretty significant. That's pretty substantial. And while some of you might be like, eh, Aptera shouldn't be complicating things, they don't need to add more things to the supply chain, just keep it simple, leave it out, I don't care if it boosts efficiency or any of that. I actually think it's a very important thing for Aptera to prioritize because at the end of the day, what Aptera is banking on more so than just an efficiency focused vehicle is a solar powered vehicle. So the more miles for free the Aptera is able to collect from sunlight, the more practical and the more money you can actually save over the life of this vehicle, which is why the difference between 10 to 15% efficiency actually does matter quite substantially. And keep in mind, I know some of you are like, all of this stuff is a distraction. Aptera shouldn't be focusing on anything else except getting into production. I see those comments all the time and they just make me laugh because I'm like, Aptera has paid for pretty much all of the little things. It's not like there's some $4 million manufacturing part that they could be buying with this crowdfunding that would suddenly get them into production. It's like, oh yeah, if we just drop the infotainment display, now we can mass produce this vehicle. No, the reason they've been looking to raise bigger dollars for a long time now is because they've paid for all of the little stuff and even some of the big stuff with the crowdfunding, like the giant body and carbon stamping presses. Those aren't cheap parts, but they've already paid for them. But what's left is a lot of the casting for the chassis and injection molding for interior components. And a lot of that stuff is not chump change. Okay, that's the kind of stuff that costs tens of millions of dollars. And it's not like Aptera researching what a $150 component can do in their vehicle is taking away from any of that, right? So crowdfunding's going really well, and I'm sure they're still going to use that money to go towards more big ticket items down the road, but it doesn't really cost Aptera much more time or much more energy to see if they can get more range out of their battery pack. And I think Aptera has probably figured out that as far as aerodynamics are concerned, there's not much more they can do to improve aero, right? We already know Hermes, the track vehicle, was getting around eight miles per kilowatt hour, but that was not meant to be a range test. You know, there's wind speed, there's elevation changes, so it's not exactly the same kind of testing that an EPA cycle would go through, but drag was up on Hermes because it's a track vehicle and it doesn't have all of the finished exterior body panels around the wheel pants, and weight was up on that vehicle because it had a machined chassis instead of a casting one, which would of course be much lighter. So I've been saying this for a while, especially in my video talking about Lucid and Aptera partnering, that would be cool, but I'm sure the powertrains Lucid has available right now are not cheap. The EMR3 is already way more affordable than anything Lucid could probably offer, and if Aptera wanted to use a Lucid drivetrain, it would easily cost probably three to four thousand dollars more than what they're paying for the EMR3. Whereas throwing in a two-speed transmission, which is something Porsche does and now Mercedes is doing, it seems like there's a growing number of EV companies interested in boosting range with this method. It's actually not a bad idea to look at the drivetrain because that's really the only next natural step you can do to boost efficiency. Aptera's kind of 
have already maxed out their capabilities when it comes to aerodynamics. It's a teardrop on wheels. Rolling resistance is already really good because, of course, it's a smaller vehicle. It's lower weight. And there's only three wheels making contact with the ground instead of four. So you've improved rolling resistance basically as much as you possibly can. You've improved aerodynamics as much as you possibly can. That means the next step of the equation to figure out how can we boost range more, yeah, that probably does come down to the drivetrain. And as all of you guys know, there's been a lot of changes since the original Aptera prototypes they unveiled years ago compared to today. Like they've switched to the onboard motor instead of the hub motors. They've decided to wait on the belly pan cooling system and have more of a traditional radiator. So those kinds of things probably eat into their original efficiency estimates. And now as more time has gone by and Aptera has utilized that time to figure out how can we make the vehicle more manufacturable? How can we find other ways of achieving great efficiency, which of course directly translate to how many free miles of range you get from sunlight. Yeah, if it turns out that the production Aptera gets like eight to nine miles per kilowatt hour, that means you're not going to be getting the 40 miles of range a day they were initially hoping. So looking into other avenues of how can we hit 10 miles per kilowatt hour, maybe it's improving the drivetrain with a two-speed transmission. And yes, while this does technically add more things that could potentially go wrong or break, I did some deep dives to figure out like what issues are people having with the Taycan EV? Is the two-speed transmission going bad in a lot of Taycans? Like, is this another point of failure? And I couldn't really find any evidence that that was actually happening. There's been issues with Porsche Taycans, whether it be battery pack or build quality stuff with doors and windows and that kind of thing, but no one's reporting issues with the two-speed transmission. So because it's just a radically simplified version of the transmissions we have in combustion engine vehicles, and because it's still working with a very reliable, steady electric motor, it doesn't look like a component that's known for going bad or breaking. So while it's not necessarily something we see on Tesla's vehicles, if you're making a super efficiency focused vehicle, there appears to be a lot of advantages to this and I get why Aptera is pursuing it and I'm very excited to see how much range or efficiency can be unlocked by incorporating this two-speed transmission in there. Like imagine if Aptera is actually able to get to launch with better than 10 miles per kilowatt hour. That would be mind-blowing and probably a little unrealistic so I'm not going to get my hopes up because when you get efficiency this good in a vehicle, there's probably going to be so many exterior variables that are going to play into it, like the weather, how hot it is, how cold it is, or what's the wind speed. Because most EVs that are not that efficient on the road today, you won't notice those kind of variables as drastically because they're just these big, heavy, fat vehicles on the road plowing through air. So the wind speed and the temperature don't affect the range all that much. But still, I'm really excited to do some range testing with these vehicles, and I plan on going down to Aptera and checking out some of their latest PI builds in the not too distant future. So feel free to let me know your thoughts or questions you guys have for this in motive collaboration down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.